so next is erythrasma okay so erythrasma is not pyoderma and it is caused due to cornibacterium species the cornibacterium or common cells or resident bacteria okay but in certain predisposing conditions they form pathogenic okay so there are three uh, bacterial infections uh, because of cornibacterium one is erythrasma second is pitted keratolysis and the third is trichomycosis axillaris okay this all three infections are called cornibacterium triad so erythrasma is caused by cornibacterium minutissimum okay and as you can see from this picture this is erythrasma so what you see is there is involvement of the axilla there is a well defined uniformly brown scaly plug okay and this will be mostly asymptomatic so what do you see involvement of the axilla and it's a well defined uniformly brown scaly macule okay and they will be asymptomatic so if you do wood slamp examination so if you see this erythrasma through a wood slamp it will show coral red fluorescence okay and this coral red fluorescence is due to the production of coproporphyrin 3 okay coproporphyrin 3 you can see okay you can see the coral red fluorescence and if you do gram stain or koh you would see fine filamentous bacteria and how would you treat this patient you would treat this patient either by topical medications or by systemic medications if it's extensive and recurrent you will give system medications otherwise the topical medications will suffice topical medications you can either give fusidic acid or mupirocin or you can also give benzoyl peroxide in systemic medications you can give clarithromycin these are macrolide group of antibiotics clarithromycin This is all about erythrasma. It's so caused by Carney bacterium monotrismum. It's in the axilla, asymptomatic, and uniformly brown scaly macule. And when you see the wood slamp, you would see coproporphyrin three, and you can treat either by topical or systemic medication. Next, Carney bacterium infection is trichomycosis axillaris. So it has mycosis, but it has nothing to related to fungus. Okay, it's misnomer. It's a misnomer. it's caused by due to corny bacterium species okay and what you see is there are yellow or brown concretions in the axillary air so there is involvement of the axillary air as the name says axillaris so in the axillary air and you see yellow concretions and they also will be mostly asymptomatic and if you do gram stain from these concretions you would see gram positive rods and how would you treat this patient treatment is simple you advise them for shaving the axillary hair and we are allowed to reduce the predisposing factor and what could be the predisposing factor the sweating so would you reduce the sweating you would give antiperspirants what would be the choice you would give aluminum chloride aluminum chloride hexahydrate this is the commonly used antiperspirants and you also you can give bacterial cleansers okay this is all about trichomycosis axillaris
could be calling back cosmic cornibacterium species axillary areas involved yellow concretion sensing they are asymptomatic and you would waste them for shaving you give antiperspirants and bacterial cleanses the next is pitted keratolysis so pitted keratolysis also due to cornibacterium species or micrococcus sedentarius micrococcus sedentarius so what do you see the soles are involved and you would see as the name says this pitted keratolysis there is removal of the keratin and forming the pit okay so you would see multiple pits arranged in cribriform pattern you see multiple superficial pits in cribriform and how would you treat this patients you will ask them to advise wear a proper footwear okay this is important and you will give antiperspirants to reduce the sweating in the soles and you can give topical medications or systemic medications the topical medications could be same the fusidic acid or mupirocin or clindamycin and sometimes they even respond to clotrimazole which is antifungal okay clotrimazole or oh, topical medications and what would be systemic medications the systemic medications would be like erythromycin which is macrolide group of antibiotics in fact so in pitted keratolysis it's caused due to two species cornibacterium and micrococcus sedentarius and soles are involved and you'll see multiple pits in cribriform pattern and what how do you treat you will advise them for proper footwear and you will give them antiperspirants to decrease the sweating and topically you can give either of the antibiotics like fusidic acid or mupirocin or clindamycin or clotrimazole and systemically you can give uh, clarithromycin if it's extensively involved so next infection is ectema gangrenosum okay these are uh, rarely seen and mostly seen in the icu settings okay seen in critically ill patients critically ill patients and in the immunocompromised patients so it's not the ectema we discussed earlier it's the ectema gangrenosum okay the early ectema was a deeper localized non follicular pyderma but this is ectema gangrenosum so if there is the formation of a gangrene okay in ectema simple ectema what we saw we saw thick crested nodule okay with erythematous ed edematous uh, surrounding area but in ectema gangrenosum we would see gangrene and this is caused by most commonly pseudomonas okay most commonly pseudomonas or it could be caused by other bacteria also like staphylococcus aureus and there are other organisms okay it could be other caused by bacteria or virus also the most commonly these organisms staphylococcus aureus and streptococcus okay but most common is pseudomonas and what you see you would see hemorrhagic pustule okay which will soon rupture to form a gangrene okay gangrene as ulcer with the surrounding erythema this is called eschar okay and where would you see this clinical picture you would see in the anogenital region or near the axilla other sites can also be involved but these are the more commonly involved sites okay this is the clinical picture so you see hemorrhagic pustule which ruptured to form gangrenous ulcer with surrounding erythema and mostly in the anogenital region or, or near the axilla and when you do culture you will find the causative organisms you would find the causative organisms the treatment should be based on the culture and sensitivity of the causative organism and if you do biopsy you would see necrotizing vasculitis so what happens is these bacteria gain entry to the vessels and be succeeded in the vessels in the dermis 
and they induce inflammation and cause necrotizing vasculitis. This necrotizing vasculitis causes obstruction of the vessels which should lead to the gangrene. Okay, and this is manifested as the gangrenous ulcer. And what could be the treatment of choice? Most commonly, it's caused by pseudomonas. So you can start empirically with anti pseudomonal antibiotics. After the anti pseudomonas antibiotics, you can use piperacillin, or you can do third or fourth generation cephalosporins or amino glycosides. Okay. So the next is botulomycosis. This is also very rarely seen and very few reports of cases are uh, reported, but this is more commonly asked in exams. Okay. The examiners are fond of asking the questions about infection which are not commonly seen. One such is botulomycosis. Botulomycosis is a chronic inflammatory response to a bacterial infection. Okay. Chronic inflammatory response to a bacterial infection. This also this name also contains botulomycosis, but it has nothing to related to fungus. Okay, it's a inflammatory response to bacterial infection. So this is also a misnomer. And this is caused by Staphylococcus aureus most commonly. Staph aureus is most common and followed by Pseudomonas and followed by Proteus and followed by E. coli. Okay, these are the commonly seen organisms. The most common is Staphylococcus aureus. So, who are the patient who are who could get this botanomycosis okay the patients are again critically ill and immunocompromised patients like patients with HIV or patients with diabetes okay, or patients with liver cirrhosis or patients who are on long-term steroids the immunity is compromised and that's why that occurs a chronic inflammatory response. So what would you see? So as you can see from this picture, you would see multiple nodules, abscesses and ulcers and sometimes you see the sinuses. And these sinuses will release the grains, okay? Similar to actinomycosis. So clinical features, you would see multiple nodules, abscesses, sinuses, ulcers, okay, and this will release grains similar to actinomycosis. So, if you do the culture from the grains, you could get the causative organisms or if you do histopathology of the grains, you would see bacteria surrounded by eosinophilic structure. Bacteria surrounded by eosinophilic structures. This resembles asteroid bodies. Okay. And how do you treat the patient? You treat the patient based on the Causative organisms, okay, based on the causative organism. So, mostly you would give third generation cephalosporins to cover Staphylococcus aureus, or based on the causative organisms you would treat. So, this is about botulomycosis.